Dear colleagues, please take your seats so that we can start our uh, evening session. And uh, we will uh, start directly with uh, our very interesting debate with Commissioner Sinkevicius and the Mayor of Turku, the Vice President of ICLE. So, dear Commissioner, dear Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, we gather today to discuss the most pressing issues of our time, the climate and the biodiversity emergencies. Right now, leaders are at the Convention on Biological Diversity, the COP15, where we hope they will agree the 2030 biodiversity targets. And this week, our committee gave its formal backing to the Edinburgh Declaration that I have the honor of signing today. I would like to thank Vice President Arne and Eichli for continuing to work so closely with us and representing subnational governments in the international talks. I would like to proceed now to the signing of the Declaration of the Edinburgh process. <clears throat> Protecting Biodiversity is a matter of protecting our health, our economies, and our climate. The Edinburgh Declaration is clear. Subnational governments, cities, and local authorities play key roles in conserving, restoring, and reducing threats to biodiversity. We will make a similar call for the COP26 declaration in Glasgow. Local and regional governments deliver 70% of climate change reduction measures and up to 90% of climate adaptation action. The subnational level of government must finally be given a formal seat in the UN's climate talk negotiations. So I call on Executive Vice President Timmermans as the EU's negotiator to ensure the regional and local dimension is included in the COP26 conclusions. To ignore the fundamental role and contribution of the world's local and regional governments will hold back our ability to deliver the climate action we need and we will continue to fail our young people and our planet. Dear Commissioner, our committee and the European Commission continues to work together in areas such as the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy, the Zero Pollution Action Plan, and the Green City Accord. This is why our committee has also launched its own campaign, Green Deal Going Local, which sets 10 actions for local leaders to deliver, one of which is its Tree for Life initiative. And I'm pleased today, I'm very pleased today, that we agree to further cooperate in this area, contributing to your proposal for 3 billion tree pledge by 2030. I call on all our members and every local leader in Europe to join us. This is our commitment because we need action now for a safer, more resilient, and green and future for our children who are asking us to secure a future to their planet. So, Commissioner, welcome, and the floor is yours. Commissioner, we have a problem with the sound.
We cannot, we cannot hear you even though before, during the testing, we could hear you. In order to save some time for the commissioner to uh, the commissioner's team to find the, the solution, let me now give the floor to Mina Arve, the mayor of Turku and vice president of ICLE. The floor is yours, Mayor. Okay, maybe you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Mr. President, honorable members of the Committee of the Regions, fellow mayors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Minna Arve, I'm mayor of Turku in Finland, and I'm happy to address you as the vice president of ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. ICLE is the global network of more than 2,500 local and regional governments committed to sustainable development. We influence sustainability policy on all levels. The climate emergency is the biggest global challenge with the local and planetary dimensions, the likes of which the world has yet to face. People are looking for smooth implementation and rapid yet safe transition. Cities and regions are the heart of this change. For example, my city Turku in Finland is implementing an ambitious climate plan and promoting circular economy. We are closing the emission gap for 1.5 degree warming. By now, we have already halved our greenhouse gas emissions from the level of 1990s. And during the same time, our economy on the area has grown. By 2029, Turku will be officially 800 years old and one of the first carbon neutral areas in the world. Circular economy has offered us opportunities to preserve biodiversity, promote social equity, and support local economic development. Circular economy innovations have created new jobs, which actually have helped us to be resilient to COVID-19 crisis as well. We are implementing the Circular Cities Declaration managed by ICLE. Like we in Turku, Cities and local governments in Europe and other parts of the world are eager to lead a just and inclusive transition. Heading towards the Glasgow COP26, we have an excellent opportunity to advance the European Green Deal and co-create Green Deal approaches on all levels from local to global. The Mannheim message adopted at the 9th European Conference on Sustainable Cities and Towns in Autumn 2020 calls for local green deals. Local and national plans need to be aligned to accelerate action and solutions for the green recovery. Cities and their leaders need to become true partners in a multi-level governance system. 
they must be enabled to contribute the shaping of the legal, fiscal and financial frameworks that rule the implementation of their ambitious local strategies. Only on this path we will be able to move fast from plans and strategies to real action. In this spirit, we join the local governments and municipal authority constituency and encourage all parties to ensure COP26 in Glasgow embraces multi-level collaboration as the new normal in the second phase of the Paris Agreement. The European Green Deal can indeed serve as an exem exemplary framework for a global alliance of subnational and, and local governments for the green recovery through local green deals. ICLE is your willing partner to create the necessary changes. Together, we can deliver progress on UN Sustainable Development Goals and Paris Agreement. In the end of the day, it's what we achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor. I would like to give the floor now to Commissioner Sinkevicius to see if the sound is back. Yes, can yes, you hear me? Is. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner. Wonderful, welcome, wonderful, welcome. wonderful. Uh, so, yes, uh, honorary members, um, good afternoon. Thank you, President Tsitsikostas and the committee of the regions uh, for this invitation it's always a pleasure to join you because you are uh, important allies in, in in reaching out to the people of europe floods in belgium and germany and and wildfires in in greece and france remind us on the need to urgently tackle the climate crisis and that's why i'll be talking today about the european green deal and what it means on the ground the local perspective of its implementation and i should stress straight away that the need for the european green deal is as strong as it was before COVID 19. the green deal is designed to deliver a transformative recovery we need to ensure that we don't go back to what used to be business as usual and move towards more sustainable patterns of production and consumption. Here is where the recovery and resilience facility comes in. With this instrument, we aim to mitigate the impact of the pandemic and make European economies and societies more resilient and better prepared for the challenges and opportunities of the green and digital transitions. The RRF makes more than 700 billion euros in loans and grants available to support reforms and investments carried on by member states through the european green deal we are encouraging all sectors businesses public authorities and citizens to participate in the transition to ensure its success there are many targets inside the green deal and they cannot be delivered by european quota in brussels alone to take one example we need a major effort from europe's regions and municipalities to help deliver a 55% cut in emissions by 2030. Challenging areas to decarbonize, like buildings, need local solutions. And they need programs supported by national and EU funding, like RRF. The Commission will always remain a willing partner, but there is a lot you can do on your own. Cities are major economic players. They their procurement decision can promote clean, integrated and inclusive public transport services. Cities can also lead in sustainable urban mobility planning so that we can tackle the poor air quality that still causes more than 400,000 premature mortalities every year. Strong commitment from public authorities is crucial for the climate neutral and just transition. You are close to citizens. You know their needs and views and you can help create a societal consensus for climate action, environmental protection and sustainability. With the European Climate Pact, we have a way to bring everybody together. I mentioned the 55% proposal. We call it Fit for 55 and it's our plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by that amount by the end of the decade. It's a very comprehensive package and it includes a tightening of the EU's emissions trading system, the increased use of renewable uh, energy, greater energy efficiency, a faster rollout of low emission transport modes and infrastructure and fuels to support them 
and alignment of taxation policies with European Green Deal objectives, measures to prevent carbon leakage and tools to preserve and grow our natural carbon sinks. The proposal is also an engagement to biodiversity, circular economy and air quality. Negotiations with the co-legislators have begun. We are determined to maintain their ambition and coherence and we are counting on your support. The recent spike in global energy prices reinforces the need for greater shares of renewable energy and more efficient use of energy. We have presented proposal uh, to achieve this in the Fit for 55 package. In December, we will also present a major new proposal to improve the energy performance of buildings. That should double the rate of renovation with major economic benefits for EU households. A new social climate fund was proposed to provide de dedicated funding to member states to help citizens finance investments in energy efficiency, new heating and cooling systems and cleaner mobility. The fund will pro provide over 72 billion euros of funding to member states for the period of 2025-2032 based on a targeted amended, uh, amend, uh, amendment uh, to the multiannual financial framework. With a proposal to draw a uh, on matching member state funding, the fund would mobilize uh, 144 billion euros for a socially fair transition. Uh, our regions are extremely important, but problems like climate change and biodiversity laws demand to be addressed at scale. In fact, they both need action on global scale. The two big international conferences coming up on climate in Glasgow and biodiversity in Kuming will test the world's commitment to change the status quo. We are leading with our own internal policies and encouraging others to follow that lead. Of the 191 parties to the Paris Agreement, more than 110 parties have so far submitted a new or updated national action plan but the emission reductions they have planned by 2030 fall far short of the ambition we need to limit global heating to 1.5 degrees. The Fit for 55 package proves that the Commission's determination to respond with speed and intensity and the international finance we offer is further proof. We have mobilized 20 1.9 billion euros for public, uh, of public funding in the EU to support climate action in developing countries. In 2019, a 7% increase over the year before. President van der Leyen recently announced a doubling of external assistance for biodiversity to help the most vulnerable countries. The president also indicated her desire to step up uh, climate finance for partner countries in others, uh, if, if others such as the US and China do the same. 11 years ago, the world agreed on a global framework for biodiversity with targets to be met by 2020. We set a vision to live in harmony with nature by 2050, but we collectively failed to implement these targets and we failed to stop biodiversity loss. And we cannot afford another fail. We need to stop the extinction of species. Our goal to hold biodiversity loss and restore nature, this must go hand in hand with climate action because nature is climate's strongest ally. In Kuming, we need to agree on an ambitious post-2020 global framework. And the first draft is a good start but we should work on uh, making it stronger, clearer, and more precise. Regional authorities indeed have a crucial role in the implementation of these global goals. We need action on the ground. For this, the Scottish government launched the Edinburgh process for engaging local and sub-national authorities. And I'm very happy with the strong engagement from the Committee of the Regions in this global process and with the opinion of on biodiverse cities and regions beyond 2020 adopted by the uh, Committee of the Regions last year. Thank you very much for this engagement. This committee has always been an important partner on our environmental policy. We share a long and fruitful history of cooperation and I look forward to the many joint actions that are under development for this coming year. The enhanced cooperation we agreed in, in April is already taking shape. We have a list of impressive pragmatic actions and ideas and this will ensure that the implementation of the Green Deal is done properly on the ground. Our cooperation touches upon many areas and I would, sing, would like to single out in particular protecting and restoring nature and biodiversity, building a circular economy and eliminating pollution. On that note, I'm already happy to announce that stakeholders can now apply to become members of the Zero Pollution Stakeholder Platform, platform a joint initiative between the committee and the commission to be launched later this year as part of our enhanced cooperation. So please spread the word.
And I would like to particularly mention the initiative of the Committee of the Regions on Reforestation, planned by planting the first tree for life by June 2022. I'm pleased to inform you that we are sending a joint letter together with President Tsitsi Kostas, uh, encouraging to participate in this initiative, which follows the EU's biodiversity strategy and the proposal to plant 3 billion additional trees by 2030. Let me stop here. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm here to listen to your views and contributions. I'm, of course, very happy to, to open the floor and I will be very glad to continue our regular dialogue as we did last year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, let us start our debate now. However, I want to let uh, know all of you that uh, we have a time constraint. We have uh, a lot of speakers. So I would like uh, for you to uh, make very short statements, please, and questions. Uh, I will start with uh, the EPP. And uh, Ms. Zdanowska, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, Panie Komisarzu, Koleżanki i Koledzy. Unia Europejska zawsze odgrywała wiodącą rolę w działaniach w dziedzinie klimatu i poprzez Zielony Ład zobowiązała się, że Europa zostanie pierwszym kontynentem neutralnym klimatycznie na świecie. To osiągnięcia tego ambitnego celu niezbędna jest jednak współpraca miast i regionów będących fundamentem wdrażania Zielonego Ładu. Tempo degradacji środowiska oraz ambitne cele klimatyczne właśnie na szczebel samorządowy nakładają odpowiedzialność za zieloną transformację. Może się ona powieść tylko wtedy, gdy władze lokalne i regionalne staną się partnerem światowych i krajowych przywódców. Jednak nie tylko w ramach konieczności dostosowania naszych małych ojczyzn do celów klimatycznych, ale przede wszystkim w ramach współprojektowania działań i rozwiązań. Taki też jest przekaz z Komitetu Regionów na COP26. Uważamy, że my jako gospodarze odpowiedzialni za lokalną zieloną transformację powinniśmy uczestniczyć w kształtowaniu przyjmowanych zobowiązań klimatycznych. Nasza aktywność ambasadorska w ramach Paktu Klimatycznego czy Porozumienia Burmistrzów jest ważna, ale nie będzie w stanie istotnie przyspieszyć koniecznych przemian. Mam nadzieję, że COP26 w Glasgow będzie przełomowy. Bardzo bym chciała, abyśmy na następnej sesji plenarnej mogli listopadowy szczyt klimatyczny określić mianem historycznego i to w wymiarze samorządowym. Ale mam jednocześnie świadomość, że jest to bardzo trudne zadanie. Potrzebujemy silnego wsparcia instytucji unijnych dysponujących siłą negocjacyjną na COP26. Natomiast my, samorządowcy, musimy zintensyfikować nasze działania, aby przekonać decydentów, że szczebel samorządowy jest niezbędny, a nawet najważniejszym elementem zielonej transformacji, który powinien być stałym partnerem rozwiązań klimatycznych. Musimy wzmocnić pozycję przywódców lokalnych i regionalnych tak, Thank byśmy you. mogli bardziej efektywnie podejmować działania prośrodowiskowe. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you. Mr. Trunka. From the EPP, you have the floor, please. Vážený pán komisár, drahí kolegovia, som hlboko presvedčený, že podmienky úspešnej implementácie zelenej dohody do veľkej miery závisia na samozprávach. Dovolte mi, aby som vám to v krátkosti vysvetlil, pričom budem vychádzať z iniciatív nášho regiónu. Ako vieme, regióny a mesta realizujú väčšinu opatrení v oblasti klímy. Ich úspech je zaručený len tak, ak sú vypracované s ohľadom na miestne podmienky. Dôležitý je však aj druhý aspekt úspechu opatrení v oblasti klímy, a to podpora od občanov. Občan, ktorý nerozumie naliehavosti klimatickej krízy, neuľahčuje dosahovanie stanovených cieľov. Prečo sa teda zameriavať na samozprávu? Prieskumy verejnej mienky ukazujú, že naši občania dôverujú svojim regionálnym a miestnym samozprávam viac, ako národným vládam a preto sme to my, ktorí máme najlepšie predpoklady na získavanie podpory občanov pre klimatické opatrenia. V našom kraji bol tiež nedávno vyrobený prvý slovenský vodíkový autobus, ktorý chceme nasadiť na cesty a vysvetliť výhody takéhoto riešenia našim občanom. Drahí kolegovia, rád by som vás vyzval, aby sme spolu zvyšovali informovanosť ľudí a nebáli sa implementovať zelené inovácie. 
Vzhľadom na to, že úspech zelenej dohody leží do veľkej miery na našich pleciach, je potrebné poskytnúť nám dostatočnú a primeranú podporu. Ďakujem pekne. Thank you very much, Ms. Tuto from the PS. Thank you very much for the floor, uh, dear Commissioner. I will not repeat what has been said. I think uh, all of us can enforce that. Bringing together the Global Green Deal, climate targets, biodiversity goals and sustainable development goals, it's all important. We as Committee of the Regions try to provide as much and we always tell what we can give as cities and Committee of the Regions. We gathered all the best practices we have. We always share examples, form city alliances. But you also have to know, I think it's also been said, that bringing our citizens with us, that's not an easy thing. So you need us, you need mayors to bring citizens because too many changes happening at the same time. A lot of goals, we are pushing for very, very strong goals, but we cannot go in the same pace. Somebody is slower and somebody is quicker, and you need to understand this. Bringing good examples, like from Budapest being deputy mayor, we've been working on our strategies at the same time, biodiversity, setting up a new sustainable energy and climate action plan. When, because when looking at adaptation, there are a lot of times two ways, and finding the nature-based solution is very important. Bringing one good initiative, I think it's like one of kind we found out in Budapest, giving values to our biomass, our trees, a new ways of counting values of trees. We not count the value, how the cost of growing it up, but what it can provide. So we give value to the trees by the capacity that it binds dust, the size of uh, the shade it can cast, the amount of CO2 it, it absorbs, and also the water it can evaporate. And it can give a different value and so this can put biodiversity in cities uh, absolutely besides all other economic issues. So please count on mayors and bring mayors to the table. Thank you. Thank you very much for respecting the time as well. Mr. Chauvet, please, from Renew Europe. Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Commissaire, le fait que nous soyons si nombreux aujourd'hui dans cette réunion qui est pourtant hybride montre, il est vrai que la situation sanitaire s'améliore, mais également que cet enjeu climatique mobilise fortement les élus locaux. Mais en tant que maire, en tant que rapporteur pour notre comité des régions de notre position sur la COP26, je suis néanmoins inquiet. Je suis inquiet parce qu'il semble qu'il y ait actuellement une concurrence entre la reprise économique et les engagements climatiques. Je crois que ce n'est pas sain et je crois que le premier facteur de succès ou d'échec de notre démarche, c'est l'engagement. En tant que maire, en tant qu'élus locaux, nous devons systématiquement expliquer pourquoi nous devons, par exemple, limiter l'usage des, des, des chauffages extérieurs, notamment de, de chauffage extérieur dans les bars et restaurants. Et tout à l'heure, même au déjeuner à Bruxelles, j'ai vu, pas très loin d'ici, qu'on continuait à, à chauffer les terrasses, ce qui est une aberration écologique absolue. Il faut donc qu'il y ait euh, un vrai engagement, une vraie compréhension des citoyens et je partage l'avis de ceux qui disent euh, qu'il y a un vrai danger à ce que la politique climatique extrêmement ambitieuse de notre continent ne soit pas comprise et que cette mécompréhension se transforme en contestation de l'idée même du projet européen. C'est pour cela que parmi les arguments que nous devons mettre en avant, l'argument financier n'est pas toujours le premier ni le plus important. Et d'ailleurs, souvent, les réponses qui sont efficaces d'un point de vue environnemental sont aussi efficaces d'un point de vue économique. Mais nous devons mettre en avant cette question de la qualité de vie, pas seulement du pouvoir d'achat dont on parle beaucoup, mais également de l'augmentation de la qualité de vie, un air sain, un environnement sûr, des villes propres et vertes. Voilà qui peut attirer dans nos villes et nos villages des hommes et des entreprises. Mais n'oublions pas qu'en tant qu'émulus locaux, nous sommes en train de mettre en œuvre diverses transitions, la transition écologique, la transition numérique, la transition également démographique. 
Et c'est pour ça que euh, dans notre avis que nous avons adopté lors euh, de la euh, plénière avant l'été, nous avons également demandé que des ressources suffisantes, y compris en capital humain, euh, soient allouées pour les collectivités locales, notamment au niveau municipal et dans les zones rurales qui ont parfois du mal à attirer des experts ou des spécialistes capables de mener euh, cette transition. Euh, et je le redis en écho à mes collègues, nous voulons vraiment être formellement reconnus comme une partie prenante à part entière du processus, être à la table des négociations et faire en sorte que nous ayons, comme pour la déclaration d'Edimbourg et comme pour d'autres initiatives internationales, vraiment notre place. Et c'est pour ça que je voudrais, en guise de conclusion, poser cette question à Monsieur le Commissaire, quelle est selon vous la recette secrète ou l'ingrédient manquant pour faire que nous Merci. reproduisions à Glasgow le succès de la COP15 et de la, la, la déclaration d'Edimbourg Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Chauvet. Mr. Stelbstra, from the ECR Group, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, the mondiale opgave om de uitstoot van broeikassen te verminderen en uiteindelijk te stoppen en om biodiversiteit te beschermen, kunnen niet onafhankelijk van, uh, onafhankelijk van elkaar worden gezien. En daarom is een integrale aanpak nodig en zijn inspanningen van bedrijven, de wetenschap en de overheden uh, van belang en op alle niveaus vereist. En ik denk dat het goed is bij de aanpak de Sustainable Development Goals te betrekken, met name 7, 9, 11, 12 en 13, die zouden de kern moeten vormen. Lokale initiatieven en projecten zijn de ruggengraat van de energietransitie en de overgang naar een circulaire economie in Europa. Als rapporteur binnen dit comité over het actieplan Circulaire Economie heb ik benadrukt dat lokale en regionale overheden een schat aan ervaring, maar ook mogelijkheden en bevoegdheden hebben die meehelpen een circulaire samenleving dichterbij te brengen. Als ik naar mijn eigen regio kijk, een energieregio, die heeft turf gewonnen, die heeft olie gewonnen, heeft gas gewonnen, maar nu zijn we bezig met een transitie naar een energiesysteem waar zon, wind en groene waterstof een belangrijke rol spelen. We zetten concrete stappen om een Fit for 55 provincie te worden. We doen dat met onze regionale aanpak, een regionale energiestrategie en we zijn de eerste hydrogen valley van Europa. Daarom werken we aan verduurzamen van onze industrie en werken we en aan de mobiele infrastructuur, bijvoorbeeld door groene waterstof. We hebben 30 waterstofbussen rijden zometeen. Ik wil nog één voorbeeld geven over circulariteit. We hebben een Noordelijk Innovatielab Circulaire Economie. En dat richt zich op een effectieve wijze op het stimuleren van innovatie en kennisdeling met betrekking tot circulaire economie in onze regio. Het verbindt studenten met bedrijven, overheden en maatschappelijke organisaties die een circulaire oplossing zoeken voor een lineair probleem. En als voorbeeld leveren de studenten een bijdrage aan het project Drenthe woont circulair, Drenthe leeft circulair. En dat is een ambitieus plan om met alle woningbouwcorporaties 140 huizen circulair te bouwen. Zes consortia werken samen in dit Living Lab door te proberen, door te leren en nieuwe wijzen van woningbouw ontwikkelen. Het zijn de voorbeelden die laten zien hoe regio's, steden en dorpen goede resultaten kunnen boeken. Maar ook hoe de transitie en versterking van de economie hand in hand gaan. En daarom, daarom zijn regio's, steden en dorpen cruciaal voor deze transities. Thank you very much. Mr. Markauskas, from the EA Group, please. You have the floor. Hachu gerbamos, president. Gerbamos, commissar. Collega Turku, miesto mere. Europos Alliance var du dekoju jums uždalivajama regiono komitetų plenarinėje sesijoje. Klimato kaita veikia visus pasaulio regionus ir artėjant jungtinių tautų klimato kaitos konferencijai. Norėčiau pažymėti, kad Europos regionų komitetas ir Europos aliansų grupė visiškai pritarė jūsų raginimui sukurti latesnį klimato valdymą, kuriame miestai ir regionai užimtų svarbę vietą prisidedant prie klimato kaitos priemonių įgyvendinimo. Kai buvę žemės ūkio ministras atsakingas ir už žuvininkystę de jūrinę politiką, o šiuo metu atstovaujantis Klaipėdos regioną, kuris yra ant Baltijos jūros kranto. Norėčiau pažymėti, kad ilgą laiką jūrinis sektorius, jūrinės bendruomenės buvo primirštos. Investicijos finansinė parama buvo nepakankamai lyginant su veiklomis vykdomomis sausumoje. Nors nepriklausomai nuo to, ar veikla vykdome sausumoje ar jūroje, Jie turime vykdyti taip, kad prisidėtume prie klimato 
kai tos poveikio mažinimo. Štai, kodėl svarbu plėtoti mėlyną ekonomiką? Tai sritis, kuri prisideda prie žaliojo kursų tikslų įgyvendinimo, taip pat turi didelį socialinį ir ekonominį poveikį ne tik pakrančių ir jūrų regionams, bet ir visai Europos Sąjungai bei gali užtikrinti ekologišką ir įtraukų atsigavimą po COVID-19 pandemijos. Komisare, noriu jums padėkoti asmeniškai už birželio mėnesį vykusį mūsų susistikimą, kuriame jūs pasidalijote viziją, kokiumis kriptimis turėtume plėtoti šį sektorių. Ir tai man labai padėjo rengiant nuomonę dėl tvarios milinos ekonomikos ir akokultūros. Ir šiandien gal tik porą vietų norėčiau paminėti, tai yra dėl nepakankamo dėmesio uostam, ypač atspiruos regionuose, nutolusius regionuose, tai yra turizmo vystimas, tai yra importuojama produkcija iš trečių šalių ir jam taikomo reikalavimo. Ačiū. Thank you very much. Ms. Aras, please, from the Greens. Herr Kommissar, meine Damen und Herren, es wird viel zu viel über die Kosten des Klimaschutzes gesprochen und leider noch zu wenig über Nachhaltigkeit. Dabei ist Nachhaltigkeit nicht nur zwingend geboten, sondern mittlerweile ein lohnendes Geschäftsmodell, mit dem man Geld verdienen kann. Denn wenn wir neben USA und China auf dem Weltmarkt überhaupt eine Rolle spielen wollen, dann müssen wir nachhaltig denken und handeln. Klimaschutz ist nicht kostspielig. Die Folgen des Klimawandels sind kostspielig. Denn keinen Klimaschutz zu betreiben, ist kostspielig. Das haben wir in diesem Jahr deutlich gesehen, bei uns in Deutschland und weltweit. Extremwetter nehmen massiv zu. Sie verursachen Überschwemmungen und Waldbrände. Sie kosten Menschenleben, vernichten Ernten und Existenzen. Sie führen zu wirtschaftlichen Schäden in Milliardenhöhe. Dazu kommen die humanitären Kosten. Nicht die kriegerischen Konflikte, sondern extremes Wetter verursacht bald mehr Flüchtlinge. Es werden ganze Regionen von der Erdoberfläche verschwinden oder unbewohnbar. Was machen diese Menschen dann? Es wird Wanderbewegungen geben. Das wird eine humanitäre Katastrophe. Auch das wird viele Milliarden kosten. Meine Damen und Herren, das 1,5-Grad-Ziel aus dem Übereinkommen von Paris gibt es seit 2015. Danach ist viel Zeit ins Land gegangen und deutlich zu wenig passiert. Laut dem jüngsten UN-Klimaschutzbericht können wir dieses Ziel nicht mehr erreichen. Es sei denn, wir legen den Hebel sofort um. Wir müssen jetzt wirklich und ernsthaft handeln. Mit dem Feed for 55-Paket muss es deshalb schnell gehen. Wir brauchen rasche politische Entscheidungen und eine schnelle Umsetzung. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. Ms. One, please, from the PS Group. And from now on, you, we all have one minute, please. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrter Herr Kommissar, angesichts des globalen Megatrends der Urbanisierung sehe ich eine wesentliche Herausforderung für einen Global Green Deal, vor allen Dingen in den Städten und ihrem Umland. Hier müssen wir als Europäerinnen mit Ehrgeiz vorangehen. Die schon erwähnte Mannheim-Message europäischer Bürgermeister mit dem Aufruf Local Green Deals ist hierfür ein gutes Beispiel. Oder auch unsere eigene ADR-Kampagne Green Deal Going Local, die ich als Botschafterin des Europäischen Klimapaktes aktiv unterstütze. Wir müssen aber auch in den Regionen kreativ sein. So nutzen wir zum Beispiel in meiner Region Niedersachsen die REACT-EU-Mittel für die Entwicklung resilienter zum Klimaschutz aktiv beitragender Innenstädte. Und vor dem Hintergrund der europaweit steigenden Energiepreise ist mir noch ein Punkt ganz, ganz wichtig. Die Europäische Union muss mit dem Green Deal der Welt beweisen, dass mit Energieeffizienz und erneuerbaren Energien eine sozial gerechte Energiewende ohne Energiearmut möglich ist. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Ms. Schuten, please, one minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, in de afgelopen twee weken heb ik deelgenomen aan de opening van een waterstofvulstation, de start van een zogenaamd klimaatplein bij een tuincentrum, waar klimaatadaptatiemaatregelen gedemonstreerd werden. En ik zag hoe de renovatie van straten werd gebruikt om een nieuw type bestrating aan te brengen voor betere drainage. Alles om voorbereid te zijn op klimaatverandering. 
Dit zijn maar een paar voorbeelden van waar burgers en overheden samenwerken. Maar wij kunnen dit niet alleen. De vele oorzaken van klimaatveranderingen zijn vaak uh, de zogenoemde wicked problems. Dit kunnen we aanpakken met empathisch lokaal leiderschap dat verbonden is met haar burgers en hun belangen en wordt erkend door Europese instituties. En vervuiling is een van die wicked problems. We verwelkomen dan ook de goedkeuring van de Euro door de Europese Commissie van het Zero Pollution Action Plan. En in onze reactie op dit plan zullen we pleiten voor meer nadruk op het principe de vervuiler betaalt en op een sterke bronaanpak. Dit zien wij als hele belangrijke randvoorwaarden om lokaal leiderschap te ondersteunen bij het versnellen van de klimaatacties. Dank u wel. Thank you very much, Mr. Ortil. Please for one minute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Przewodniczący, Mr. Commissar. We are debating about the issues related to the Green Deal. Aby uczynić Europę bardziej ekologiczną, dobrze jest pamiętać o znaczeniu europejskiego systemu obserwacji Ziemi, Copernicus. Program pozwala zdobyć dokładniejszą wiedzę o naszych terytoriach, pozwala nam dogłębnie zrozumieć środowisko i społeczno-gospodarcze systemy. Dzięki obrazom satelitarnym mamy możliwość monitorowania różnych środowisk, a tym samym podejmowania bardziej świadomych decyzji, jeżeli chodzi o ochronę, ochronę środowiska. Mój region, województwo podkarpackie, współpracuje z 22 regionami na platformie Nereus. Wspólnie z Komisją Europejską, Europejską Komisją, Agencją Kosmiczną stworzyliśmy zbiór najlepszych praktyk. Regiony już z tego korzystają. Przykłady tych dobrych praktyk potwierdzają, że przede wszystkim musimy stosować je do tych polityk, które są objętych Zielonym Ładem. Obrazy satelitarne nie są już dzisiaj tylko dla ekspertów z kosmosu. Naprawdę widać więcej i musimy z tego nauczyć się korzystać. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you, Miss Hegedus. One minute. Okay, Mr. Jorgos Hadzimarkos, please. Κύριε Πρόεδρε, είναι αναμφίβολα, είναι αναμφίβολα πολύ σημαντική η κλιματική αλλαγή και επικροτούμε τη δέσμη προτάσεων Fit for 55. Να συγχαρούμε εσάς για τη συγκρότηση της ομάδας η οποία θα είναι παρούσα στον 26η Σύνοδο Διάσκεψης των Μερών στην Γλασκόβη και στο σημείο αυτό να πω ότι για να έχουμε μια δαφική συνοχή και κανόνες δικαιοσύνης στην εφαρμογή της πολιτικής αυτής θα πρέπει να υπάρξει ειδική πρόβλεψη για την ισχυωτική Ευρώπη και εκπροσωπώντας μια περιφόρεια με 50 νησιά και 34 δήμους να πω ότι το επίπεδο τροτότητας των νησιωτικών κοινωνιών και οικονομιών σε ό,τι αφορά την κλιματική αλλαγή, κυρίως σε θέματα ενέργειας αλλά και οικονομίας είναι πάρα πολύ υψηλό. Με λίγα λόγια, σύνθετοι δείχτες βιωσιμότητας για την ισχυωτική Ευρώπη, για τα 2.400 νησιά της Ευρώπης, πολιτικές εναρμονισμένες στα μεγέθη αλλά και τις ιδιαιτερότητες των νησιών και καθιέρωση της νησιωτικότητας ως ειδικού κριτηρίου για την υλοποίηση πολιτικών. Νησιωτικότητα για μας είναι κάθε μικρό και απομακρυσμένο νησί να γίνει τόπος ίσων ευκαιριών που ήταν και η θεμελιώδη συνθήκη στη Ρώμη. Ευχαριστώ. Ευχαριστώ πολύ, κύριε Χατζημάρκο. Μίστερ Φρέι, πλήσε. Και αυτό είναι η τελευταία εμπειρία μας. Σε ένα λεπτό. Κύριε Κομισάρ, 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 in dieser Hinsicht tätig werden. Meine Region Baden-Württemberg hat als deutsches Bundesland 2015 zusammen mit Kalifornien im Vorfeld der COP21 die sogenannte Under Two Coalition ins Leben gerufen. Heute vertritt dieses Bündnis 260 Regierungen weltweit und damit 50 Prozent des globalen BIP. Im Vorfeld der COP26 hat die Under Two Coalition ihre Absichtserklärung zur globalen Klimaführung neu ausgerichtet und auf das 1,5 Grad Ziel. Angepasst. Bis 2050 will sie Netto-Null-Emissionen erreichen. Die Koalition wird damit zu einer Netto-Null-Coalition. 
die sich mit ihren neuen Zielen an den wissenschaftlichen Erfordernissen ausrichtet. Sie hat auch mit der UN-Kampagne Race to Zero zusammengeschlossen, um alle Akteure weltweit dabei, dabei zu unterstützen, sich der Kampagne für unsere Erde anzuschließen. Denn je mehr Staaten, Regionen und Städte hier mitmachen, desto mehr wird eine echte Transformation gelingen. Und sollten Sie Interesse an der, an der Crew Coalition haben, dann schließen Sie sich dieser an. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. I would like now to give the floor to Commissioner Sinkevicius for uh, his uh, uh, reaction to our debate and uh, to what uh, our members had to say. Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me well. Very, very well. And, and of course, uh, thank you very much uh, all for your intervention. They are interventions. They are very important, and and I'm very happy to to feel that energy in the room and eagerness to actually uh, cooperate, work together uh, in uh, actually looking for best uh, possible solutions to foster our green deal. As I told you in 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 my introductory speech. Uh, uh, your role is crucial because uh, every day you are the ones that, that are closest to people, uh, that people can relate to, ask questions, uh, and that people can feel that they have a direct impact on, 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 on policies and changes in, in, in the closest surroundings. And I think this is uh, what, the, uh, what can uh, motivate them well to actually be supportive, supportive of the Green Deal. Now, on a couple of your uh, remarks that you mentioned, uh, uh, I will give maybe a bit more precise answers. So, first of all, we th thank uh, the committee for the good cooperation on environmental policies, and we are open to enhancing cooperation further with the committee. And in 2021, we undertook an enhanced cooperation with DG Environment on four thematic areas, so zero pollution, circular economy, green city accord, and biodiversity. And we prefer to focus our energy on this new cooperation. Uh, we decided that the, what the structure of the, the cooperation will look like together with the committee, and, and we recognize the important role um, that, that the local and regional authorities have in, in handling and executing most environmental strategies on the ground. Fit for 55 package was mentioned a few times. So first of all, in absolute terms, energy-related expenses uh, for European households are expected to raise up until 2030, and building-related heating expenses may increase by the equivalent of up to 1% of household incomes by 2030. Poorer households will be impacted more. The inclusion of road fuels in the emissions trading system would raise prices by around 12 cents per liter, with an increase for the average household of about 120 euros. And the green transition will not happen unless it's supported by all in society. It must be fair. And the climate policies risk putting extra pressure on vulnerable households, micro enterprises, and, and transport users in short run. The design of, of, of the policies in the Fit for 55 package therefore fairly spreads the costs of tackling and adapting to climate change. Carbon pricing offers tools to, to address distributional impacts by using the revenues to mitigate regressive impacts. The Commission proposed a new social climate fund to provide um, dedicated funding to member states to help citizens finance investments in energy efficiency, new heating and cooling systems, and cleaner mobility. The social uh, climate fund uh, would be financed by EU budget using 25% of the uh, expected revenues from including buildings and road transport in the emissions trading system. And it will provide uh, more than 72 billion of funding to member states for the period uh, of 2025 2032. And if member states match the EU's funding, the fund would mobilize uh, 144 billion uh, for a socially fair transition. So the Commission will also present a major new proposal uh, in December to improve the energy performance of buildings. Uh, which in the longer term will, of course, reduce um, heating bills for households and provide more comfortable homes. The member states must also include measures in their national 
uh, energy and climate plans to address energy poverty. And these plans will be updated in mid-2023 and should seems to be a connection problem. Can the administration please inform me what the issue is here? Okay, let me give the floor so that we don't lose time the floor to me Narve, please. So thank you for your contribution and, and very, very important and, and impressive input uh, for this discussion. I, I could maybe conclude my part for three points I have, which I've learned also during the COVID pandemic. First of all, everything is possible. If there is a will, there is a way. Secondly, actions is everything what counts. Science is there for help. Cities are already acting. So now in COP26, there is also a possibility for national governments and global community to show that they are also willing to act. Everyone, thirdly, everyone has responsibility, which is larger than an individuals, larger than from one city, larger than from one country. Neither virus, COVID virus, neither climate, they don't recognize borders. So we need everyone on board. So in the end of the day, it's about what we achieve, not what we promise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is Commissioner Sinkevicius back? No. Okay. So uh, I would like to thank uh, our two guests, uh, the Mayor of Turku and the Commissioner Sinkevicius for uh, participating in this very interesting debate. I would like to thank all of you, dear colleagues, for uh, participating uh, actively in this debate, in person and uh, online. And I would like now to move to our next debate on uh, natural disasters, responding to emergencies and building resilience in cities and regions. And uh, I would like uh, at this point to welcome the Commissioner for crisis management, Janes Lenarcic, a good friend of the Committee of Regions and of the regions and cities uh, all across Europe, and a great supporter of our work. Commissioner, welcome. Fantastic. Really glad that you have found time to be here with us. Thank you. 